Hey everyone, it's Luke from Weld Pro. Today, I'm here with the MiG-155 to show you a little bit more about running self-shielded wire with this machine. We'll have a gas-shielded solid wire video, which will be part four. But for now, let's dive into the self-shielded wire. If you haven't seen part two of the MiG-155 video, check that out. This is where we'll show you how to set up your wire through the drive rolls and feed it through the liner, setting up the MiG gun. We're going to focus on adjusting the settings of the MiG-155 and running some passes with the self-shielded wire. So go ahead and energize your machine using the switch in the back. If we take a look at the front of the machine, there's a couple buttons that you may need to adjust. Take a look at the button in the bottom right corner of the display. This is the button that will allow you to switch between stick and MiG mode. The next button to the left is a 2T4T trigger function switch. Make sure this is set to 2T, which is the top setting. Once those two settings are assigned, let's figure out a wire speed and voltage that's going to work well for our application. Today, I've cleaned up some eighth inch mild steel plate. The self-shielded wire I have loaded in my machine is an 030 size. So, one of my favorite settings to run on something like eighth inch mild steel plate with an 030 self-shielded wire maybe around 18 volts, uh, 260 wire speed. So I'm going to try that setting. We can always make an adjustment after our first pass and we've seen how it runs. Just a quick reminder, if you need to clean or remove your nozzle, do so by pulling straight out with a slight clockwise motion. Don't try to unscrew this nozzle counterclockwise. You'll break the spring and the nozzle. With the settings where I want them on the machine and our gun ready to go, let's lay down our first pass and see how it looks. My weld started off a little cold, but it seems to be running great right now. I'm using the edge of my plate as a guide to keep me running straight. Pay close attention to your MIG nozzle. You don't want it to be too far away from the plate. The longer the wire electrode extension, the more resistance you're putting into the wire. It's best to keep it a little closer if possible. My weld came out looking pretty good. I knew I had a little trouble at the beginning because my wire extension was too long and it ran a little too cold. You'll immediately notice the slag coating over the top of it. The slag on self-shielded wire can often be difficult to remove, but once you do, you should see a relatively clean looking bead. I'm going to change my settings so you can see the effect it has on the weld. I'm going to try running this a little over 16 volts and about 225 wire speed. Now, I can definitely tell this is running a little cooler but still running very nicely, and this would be appropriate for something even a little thinner. Keep an eye on your weld pool. Don't travel too fast. Make sure that your weld pool keeps up with you. At the end of my pass, I like to travel backwards quickly just to fill in the crater and then extinguish my arc. I like the way this pass ran. Those were pretty good settings. We can see as I remove the slag, the surface of this weld looks pretty smooth. Let me change my wire speed and voltage settings one more time. I'm going to try 20 volts and a little over 315 wire speed. Right away I can tell this pass is running hot. It's getting good penetration but producing a lot of spatter. This is a great setting for welding something a little thicker. I'm going to terminate my weld using the same technique as before. This weld was hot, you can see it by the glowing plate, but overall I'm happy with this pass. It looks really smooth and once I get the slag off, I'm going to wire brush these passes and we'll see what all three turned out like. All three of these passes turned out pretty decent. They have a smooth weld surface and looks like they got great penetration. As you can see, voltage and wire speed adjustments make a big difference to the appearance of your weld. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully you learned a little more about running self-shielded wire on the MiG-155. If you haven't had a chance yet, take a moment and hit the subscribe button below this video. WeldPro is committed to releasing lots of tutorial and how-to videos to better help you as a welder. 
Thanks again, and from all of us here at Weld Pro, we can't wait to see what you build with your MiG-155.